So how do you optimize an experience you create on Outgrow for conversion? Basically, how do you take someone who's visited your calculator or quiz or any Outgrow experience you create and capture their email? So the first thing to think about is the location of the lead generation form. So if you really want to maximize conversion, if that's your number one goal, then right here on the welcome page, putting the capture, the lead capture works well. So if I come on here, let's just say I put outgrow review and questions at outgrow.co, find your email open score. Now what I've basically done is I've captured the email right from the beginning. Okay. And that tends to work well when you really are focused on lead gen and you want to make sure everyone who visits your calculator quiz has the, sees the lead gen form, right? Uh, another thing you can do is, you, you know, another thing you at least want to think about is how do you handle the number of fields to input, right? So this is point number two, which is what fields do you have in the lead gen form? So the first example I showed only had full name and email. This example asks for name, first name, last name, email, phone number, and company name. That's five fields. Uh, I would recommend trying to stick with full name and business email address or uh, email address if it's a consumer facing application without asking separately for company and phone number, uh, mainly because you can get the company name and website from the business email address and phone number will impact your conversion rate. If it is absolutely required, um, then you can put phone number, uh, but generally speaking, you know, two fields uh, ends up maximizing your conversion rate because people are comfortable and used to putting two fields. So th those are kind of a few things to think about when you really want to optimize for conversion. The, the most difficult place to put lead gen would be on the results page. Um, so in this case, you've already shown, like you can see that I've already shown my result and then I ask for email and uh, name. So that's going to really give you a much lower conversion rate than putting it on the welcome page or right before the results. So um, ideally, the number one option would be on the welcome page. The number two option would be right before the results. And then if lead gen is not even, a, not even like a core priority and it's a side thing and you're mainly focused on engagement, then you can do something like this where you put it on the results page. Okay. The third point is the number of questions along with the type and number of fields per question. So those two components impact your conversion rate, especially uh, when you have lead gen before the results, right? So let me show you an example of a, uh, a calculator or a quiz that's done this well. So you come onto the page, and this is an outgrow uh, experience. You'll see that the first question just has two options. What type of writing are you likely to be doing? So let's say, you know, everyday commuting. And then what is the terrain? Let's just say very hilly. And then what is your frame reference? Let's say diamond frame. Now notice that each question has two options. There are only three questions, right? Or this one had three options. So two options, three options, two options. They're nice images. And that's it, three questions before they take you to the lead gen form. So here in the lead gen form, they have three fields, first name, last name, email, right? So that's reasonable. And your likelihood of conversion is much higher because it only took you, a f you know, maybe 30 seconds to get through the first three questions. You're just selecting options. You're not typing things. You're just quickly selecting an option. And then you get to the lead gen form here. You submit, and then it gives you the result. Okay? So that's an example of a company that's done it well. Another uh, example here is like, so generate ideas for a quiz or calculator. It's an outgrow example. So you come in, which category? Let's say you're in e-commerce. Subcategory, let's say you're, you're selling B2B commerce. And you put your email. And then you get your results. So here it was just a one, uh, it was two questions, lead gen form, and then you get your, your results. What's, in this case, lead gen form only had one field. Um, and then the questions were drop down instead of typing. So that makes it a bit faster when you have a drop down type fields 
Um, so you really, the main thing here is single select radio button type experiences with images do well because those types of questions are much faster. Uh, whereas if you have a lot of free form text input, that's going to be a bit slower because the user has to do more work for each question. Um, and generally speaking, three questions um, up to eight is kind of a sweet spot for a number of questions. If you go beyond eight, the calculator has to be extremely useful and relevant for, uh, for someone to be willing to keep going beyond that, right? So three to eight is a good sweet spot to focus on. Um, you obviously, if you're trying to give them an advanced recommendation, uh, like what type of car should you get? If you only have two questions, then they might not trust your car recommendation because there's so many different moving pieces and custom options in a car. Um, so you want to have the right balance uh, there. But for number of fields within a question, um, two to four is generally good. Once you go beyond six fields, then it has, especially on mobile, they're scrolling down to get to all the fields. So that's the advantage of trying to keep the number of fields uh, low and trying to keep the type to be single select or radio button. And then uh, for a number of questions, trying to keep it also low. Okay, the fifth point when it comes to trying to get people to convert is, you know, you've got the lead gen. You've done a good job asking a few questions with a few fields that are relevant and, uh, and interesting and they're quick to proceed. The next thing you want to do is have a really high quality results page. The reason why this helps, um, this helps in a few ways. The first is it helps build trust with the customer. So they're more likely to um, share the experience. They're more likely to, um, to respond to a follow-up email that you might send them. Uh, they're more likely to want to engage with your business if you build trust with them with the results page. So let's go through a few examples. So this is a very, very in informative results page. You can see how the price, it's basically showing you how price of building an application varies by geography, right? And you can see like these geographies are gonna cost around this much. And it also shows you how the price varies by specific features that you requested. And so it's a very informative and valuable results page. The likelihood of the end user posting your project becoming a very valuable lead and actually submitting a project or sharing it or referring this to a friend, um, so you can share it on Facebook or Twitter, um, is much higher, right? Another example, uh, this is like a results page that shows the value clearly. It shows the impact on your, basically this is just showing you how, um, a certain new insurance plan or policy can impact you, um, but it kind of clearly highlights the dollar value and the number of people in your state that are impacted by the policy. So again, here the design is uh, it looks good, and so that's more likely for someone to share it and to to help you bring in more leads as well. I'll show you two more examples of nice results pages. Here they've used our charts feature to show you. Uh, the price, uh, different options around your your debt relief, um, the cost of the debt relief based on type of loan. And so you see how the interest varies, the monthly payment, and the total cost varies when you look at the different types of loans. So you can, and then when you go down, you can see the national debt relief numbers, the consolidation loan, credit counseling, and minimum, do nothing minimum payments. Uh, so again, here, the results are, are very engaging, and so people are more likely to, to share it and to engage with you. Last example is here. So here you see your brain health risk score. So it shows you your health, your brain health by dimension. So you can see, okay, these are the key six dimensions. This is how brain health is impacted, or your score across those dimensions. And then you get an overall score and then a score for each subsection with kind of a nice image or a nice uh, icon and then a clear score with different kind of colors and um, it's just kind of like a nice results page. You, you're much more likely to trust and engage with this uh, with this company when you see a well-designed results page that makes you uh, feel and, and trust that this is legitimate. All right, so the relevance of questions and topic to audience. This is really important because, especially when someone's taking a calculator quiz, 
Uh, a lot of the times you might want to ask them questions that are not directly relevant to a calculator quiz uh, result, but that are helpful to you, they're helpful for you to know about, right? So a lot of the times, you know, a market research department or your sales team might say, you know, we want to get this certain information from a customer. Let's include that in a quiz or calculator. Um, that is okay to do uh, if your if most of the calculator is highly relevant questions and you might have one question that's useful for your sales team. Um, you know, like what's your budget, monthly marketing budget or something like that. If that's very useful for you to know to help segment the lead um, and the rest of the calculator is very useful and relevant to the actual result, then it's okay to have that. Uh, but definitely uh, make uh, market research based survey type questions less than a third of the calculator quiz so that the uh, the audience is more likely to want to share it uh, and more likely to want to complete the quiz or calculator and not feel like they're just completing a survey. Okay, the CTA and share button on the results page. Um, so this is, uh, this is a key uh, point that you want to incentivize people on the results page to either so here, click here to get a free quote so you have a clear call to action or here you have share, tweet, or share on LinkedIn. So you're incentivizing them to share. Um, in this example, you're asking them to post your project, right? So you have a clear call to action. Um, this example here, they say shop it now. So they've recommended which bike you should buy. Shop it now. When you click on it, it takes you to that specific bike that they recommended. It takes you right there to their page. You can do a quick view, and you can basically add it right away to your cart and buy it. So that's another cool example of a, of a well done uh, results page CTA because you want to make it easy for them to share or to you want to have a clear call to action for what they should do next based on the result they got. The last thing is to have an offer on the lead gen form. And so basically here um, you can see that it says where should we send your where should we send you your 20% coupon? So now they're not telling you, hey, just give us your email so you can show the results. We're also going to give you an offer, a 20% coupon, um, a free Kobe Bryant jersey. A, um, you're going to enter a raffle to win you know, XYZ prize uh, or a free Amazon Echo. So now you've, you've given them an incentive to provide their name and email, and this definitely significantly improves your conversion rate when you have coupons and offers. Um, and you can create duplicates and, and experiment and see what type of offer performs best with your audience. But that really does help increase your conversion rate. So I hope this helped you think through uh, the whole process of optimizing um, your entire Algo experience for conversion and making, uh, making it an experience that someone wants to share, that someone enjoys completing, and that someone is excited to kind of hear back from you. Thank you.